I'm Troy Kirby with MLT News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The Senate Health and Long-Term Care Committee heard public testimony on Senate Bill 5371, which would fund public health services, including a healthy equity initiative through a statewide sweetened beverage tax. Senate Bill 5371 addresses inequity. First, it works to reduce the consumption of a product that causes negative health, com- health outcomes that are disproportionately felt by communities of color. Products that are heavily promoted and targeted at, the- at these communities with marketing by the beverage industry. This bill is almost identical to the Seattle Sweetened Beverage Tax, and it is being brought forth for a very similar reason. Um, supposedly not to raise money, but to improve public health among individuals, uh, particularly among lower income. However, researchers have found that the tax may have no effect. A 2020 study by UW and Seattle Children's Research Institute found that the rate of soda consumption among children in Seattle was about the same as it was for children outside of the tax zone. Our tax was passed in 2016 and went into effect in January of 2017. It's one and a half cents on every ounce of sweetened beverage distributed for sale in Philadelphia. So beyond grocery stores or convenience stores, this tax affects anyone who sells beverages, including restaurants and bars, universities, hospitals, stadiums, everybody. The tax raised nearly $70 million last fiscal year and $291 million since inception. And although opponents predicted dire economic consequences of our tax, our experience does not bear this out. A can of soda that's on the shelf that's clearly labeled at 160 calories is taxed. But the blended coffee drink on the shelf right down the aisle, because its primary ingredient is milk, is not taxed. But it actually has a calorie content of over 200 calories. So the lesser product ends up actually being taxed while the the higher calorie product is not. We run into problems where um, a Lunchable that does not have any beverage in it is untaxed. A Lunchable with a Capri Sun in it is taxed. I also live in Berkeley, California, and was part of the strategy team that first passed uh, the first municipal soda tax in the country in 2014. And I still serve on the Citizen Commission that makes recommendations on how to invest our soda tax revenues to improve health in Berkeley. The revenue for equity has far exceeded our expectations. And it's interesting that I remember the same comments that are being made against the tax uh, uh, back then that I'm hearing on this call today. So I, as I'm sitting here, what I'm hearing you say is that you would like for people to consume less sugary drinks, which ultimately you say will be the outcome. So what we're doing is we're creating a funding policy for very important work that we're assuring a a reduction in funding because people will, just like we see with the cigarette tax with the, you know, the percentage of drops of people who quit buying legal cigarettes, Um, So we're setting ourselves up for failure in funding for foundational public health because we're assuring people will buy less. How would you respond to that? I would respond that this is the purpose of the tax is to uh, fund public health measures that are targeted towards communities that are most affected by these health diseases and outcomes. In Seattle, within the first year of the sweetened beverage tax, it brought in 49% more money than was expected. When I read this legislation, I thought, wow, Senate Bill 5371 has taken the Seattle bill and actually made it better by specifically allocating money to public health equity. A lot of my members are small convenience stores. We're very concerned that the coronavirus has devastated small business and cost many people their jobs and their incomes. We need to relieve businesses of burdens, not put more on them with a new tax. This makes it harder for us to recover from this historic economic downturn. Here's the problem though. You aren't really addressing the shortfall. This bill is yet another in a series of new taxes that keep coming out of Olympia. They don't address the budget. 
They don't address the shortfall. It's funding yet more social programs. We are quickly approaching the one year mark of the initial shutdown due to the pandemic. And in that short time, the hospitality industry has been economically devastated. We have already lost over 2000 hospitality businesses permanently and the ones that remain are hanging on by a thread. While we have some, have, while some have been able to pivot in order to operate through for, forced closures due to COVID-19, sales are still drastically down. Even with the little revenue coming in, the average food business still has to pay $25,000 a month in fixed costs to stay in business. Senate Bill 5371 will add additional costs to my already elevated expenses for my business each month that I simply do not have. After review, reviewing purchase orders pre-COVID-19, I estimate that this proposal will cost $738 a month in taxes alone. This discriminatory tax will disproportionately affect the grocery bills of low-income households, as well as our already struggling restaurant industry. Our restaurant customers will see the products we sell to them almost double. I'd like to state for the record, our opposition of Senate Bill 5371, not only here locally in Clark County, Washington, but also statewide on behalf of the Teamsters Union. In 2010, Local 58, along with other coalitions and other statewide Teamster locals, opposed the legislators' tax on beverages and other grocery items and was part of the coalition to successfully repeal this legislation. In 2018, we once again joined a broad coalition of business and labor and community organizations from across the state to support the ballot initiative that voters approved, prohibiting the taxation of groceries, including beverages, by local governments. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by MLT News, covering the 2021 legislative session.